So what does it mean to deny ourselves? Calvin had a broad view of what it meant to deny ourselves. This is what he says, For when the scripture bids us leave off self-concern, it not only erases from our minds the earning to possess, the desire for power, and the favor of men, but it also uproots ambition and all craving for human glory and other more secret plagues. Denying ourselves meant much more to Calvin than just saying no to ourselves once in a while. But it was uprooting and denying every thought, agenda, and desire that we have in the flesh. Total self-denial is the necessary prerequisite to living for God. And maybe this concept of self-denial is new. To us. And so let's just ask, why is self-denial so important that Calvin would call it the sum of the Christian life? The simple reason is, is that we in ourselves are corrupt. This came from Calvin's rich understanding of who man was. He sums up what this means in very practical terms in considering Philippians 2.3, which tells us to esteem others more significant than ourselves. Calvin says that this one command is beyond our ability because we're all consumed with what he calls self-love. We can't, in and of ourselves, genuinely love other people because we're too in love and infatuated with ourselves. Self-love is a concept that is held out as a virtue today. You just think about what is being taught to our children. They're being taught to do things for the sole sake of being noticed and praised. How much talk do you hear about self-esteem? It's, it's talked about to the extent that if somebody is has a low self-esteem, the way that you encourage them is to build an illusion world of self-flattery around them to make them feel good about themselves. And perhaps we think that encouragement itself means thinking good about ourselves. That we feel loved when other people make so much of us. The sad part about all of this is that Calvin had this point so right. And probably all of us in here are much more in love with ourselves than we really think. Our great problem is that we have far too high a view of ourselves and our abilities. We think that we are emperors of our own kingdom. And Calvin even says that we view ourselves as, as having our own kingdom in our breast which is why we seek to be seen in all that we do. The greatest need that we have is to deny ourselves and this over-exalted view that we have of ourselves and cry out for the grace of God because we don't stand in need of any more self-esteem but the grace of God to enable us to esteem Him. Why must we deny ourselves as the first step well, not only are we infested with self-love, but the ability to overcome it isn't found in us. In ourselves, we are depraved. We lack goodness. So we might as well ask ourselves, what does this model have in common with contemporary self-help models? And the answer is, absolutely nothing. The biblical approach is here not to teach us that we can help ourselves through life's trials, but it teaches us that we are helpless apart from the aid and grace of God in Christ alone. Getting out of ourselves is what we all need. How can we get a grip on our selfishness? How can we handle self-enthrallment that we have? It is to hear that we are weak unable and lacking any goodness, that the only goodness we have comes from the blessing of God. We ought to be broken and undone for having trusted in ourselves so much and be humbled to know that what we have needed to do all this time is deny ourselves 
and all of our characteristics that we have boasted in so much that we might make our stay and hope in Christ alone. 